Welcome back, Zero K fans. This should probably be the last cast of the night. It's gonna be Clone and Lori on Titan Duel. Once again, this is a particularly long match, so strap in, get your popcorn, and we shall begin. First off, though, go over Titan Duel briefly. Titan Duel, fairly flat map, very vehicle focused. Both players starting in the corners, with the southwest and northeast corners being very valuable. Although you do see geothermal plants in the south west and northeast as well as the west and east center they are never used i don't i can't recall a single game where the geothermal plants are, actually no, i can call one or two games from months and months ago where the geothermal plants were used it's extremely rare usually the players will go for the corner mexes and then try to take the center occasionally we'll see a player try to take the center and go towards but usually the north player will go south along the west side and the south player will go north along the east side that's generally how it goes Let's see how it starts. We have Clone going for heavy tanks and Lori going for light vehicles. And if it weren't for the name tags, I would have guessed the opposite because Lori is well known for their fondness to heavy tanks. But no, in this case, Lori going for the light vehicles. Going early scouting while Clone going for early Kodachi because that's what you do with tanks. Early Kodachi and then just build up from there using the Kodachi to try to make up for the fact that you went for the very expensive factory. On the other hand, Lori is going in with the darts. Sending him out to scout, as usual. Typically what you do, just double check there's nothing being built very quickly over to the west side of the map. But mostly, it's just a matter of making sure that you get in on an angle, because your opponent probably hasn't defended both. Now, Kodachi, on the other hand, aware enough, apparently, of... Yeah, well, it was going towards Lodi's base. Sorry, it was going towards Lodi's dart. The dart is coming along. The thing is, on this map, the players can only start in the corner, so it it's not like you need multiple scouts to know. It's more just you need multiple scouts in case the first one runs into stag defense. And the dart here, trying to harass it out. I don't think it'll work. Not able to actually kill anything. Although... Oh, just... Oh. Lotus gets in the way. Almost killed that wind generator, though. Not that it was a huge deal. Kodachi, on the other hand, dealing far more damage. Able to get rid of this metal extractor while the commander is distracted. And able to get away with 10 health. Or will that middle extractor survive? It will, actually. It just barely survives. Neither player able to do much in the way of meaningful harassment. The Lottery is having to use some of their power to repair, whereas... Oh, actually, Clone did that too, so it's not like it's that big of a difference. Both players... Pretty neck and neck at this point. Lottery, however, getting up a few slashers just to make sure, just for extra defense, they can push forward. And the next Kodachi's coming in, or the Panthers coming in later on, which are inevitable. Those will be pretty well taken care of by the Slashers. The Kodachi's more so. On the other hand, if Clone does the same thing as... I don't remember who it was. In the tournament, we had a match where it was basically Ravager versus Banisher. That did not go well for the Banishers. Panthers would have gone far better. I think it was Lottery, though. I think it was... Is it Lottery and... Oofonk? I can't remember offhand, actually. I'm sorry, I don't know why I can't remember that. Oh, that's not relevant right now because it's not the game being played. It was also on Red Comet. If that matters. But yeah, it was one of the matches on Red Comet. The Scorchers, they should be able to take care of the Kodachi, but I don't know. The Kodachi is actually going to go down. Rather poor driving there. Going right into the wall, and that is... That is going to end up with nothing dying except for that Kodachi. Poor Kodachi. I'm a bit surprised Clone has not switched over to Panthers yet. They're still building Kodachis. I mean, that was... That should be the second Kodachi, I think. Might be third. I think it's just second at this point. Oh, yeah. Kenku e-stalling, although admittedly 17-12 is a little bit extreme. The thing is, players, especially in the early game, typically think in terms of, well, metal is harder to get because of territory control. That's harder to do. Getting energy is easier. And metal storage, until it excesses, you're actually not really wasting a whole lot. You're simply deferring it in time. Uh, you can excess metal and then afterwards just set up a bunch of caretakers or workers on the factory in order to use that metal later on. The risk, of course, is that your opponent will attack you before you're able to make use of that spending. The other risk is that you end up excessing as Clone is about to. Because Clone has twice the metal as energy. Really should have been building a few more power plants. I think it's just the wind generators. They're 0.2 to 2.5. Same problem as the game on on Battle for Planet 17. On this map, however, it's kind of hard to get good wind. I mean, the best you can do is 0.4 minimum. So it does come down to luck still. 
And at this point, Clone now getting a bit lucky again from the look. No, not even getting lucky, just building more power plants, building more solar plants. Now has enough. They now have enough energy to use the metal. Lowry, on the other hand, they've built enough power early on that it's not a big deal. Yeah, he, the plan likely was not to east all, but Lowry. I mean, Clone, I should say, now getting their energy above their metal. They can now spend it, but at the same time, their commander in a really bad spot. Calm dive on these. Well, okay, it's an attempted calm dive. Got it down to a third of its health, but not enough. Didn't quite kill it. Thanks to the Kodachi. I mean, it's a lot. It's a Kodachi. Kodachi, Lotus, Defender, and the commander itself is upgraded with Beam Laser. Clone is not one to let themselves die easily. They are a very defensive player. Lodri wasn't bad on that, though. I mean, it was, it was a matter of not knowing really what was there. Lodri now knows that there's a bunch of stuff over here. They know that stuff has been built over there, but they didn't really know that beforehand, so I'm not... Not gonna blame them. They do know there was there were things thanks to radar, which has just been reduced. But the specifics weren't necessarily known. And once again, more radar. Clon really reducing what Lodri can see. Pretty much Lodri at this point can only see their corner of the map. They had half the map vision. And that Kodachi just took away a lot of information that would have been very useful. Lodri, however, still pressing forward. Probably should build more radar, but still pressing forward. Trying to take the northeast, trying to just set up a nice defensive line right south of the northeast expansion in order to take it more easily. They're going to be taking it as soon as they build this defender. While Kluon, on the other hand, they're going straight for the south. They're not even building up a defensive position to hold it. They're just going straight for the southwest, trying to take it as quickly as possible. Not even worrying, and really should probably... <laughs> they're hitting the plus 20 hump, surprisingly. Getting the caretaker up, but yeah, actually plus 25-ish, because they had the commander building. But still, they are hitting that build hump. This is very unusual at high level play. However, they are also dealing with it quite nicely, setting up the caretakers, setting up a couple of caretakers, the air factory, all the stuff in their commander in the base just to defend. They aren't letting it go two ways too much. That wasn't very much accessing. Still, happens to the best of them. Even the best players will let their metal excess, will not have enough build power when they need it from time to time. The important thing is that they rectify it as quickly as possible. And now we're switching into Banisher. Well, Banisher, Reaper, and Ravager, Scorcher, which I'm going to give this to Light Vehicles. Ravager, Banisher, like I said, doesn't go well for Banisher. Ravager, Reaper is a little bit trickier. It kind of comes down to Micro, because the Reaper has more powerful shots, but both of them are fairly slow shots. I think the Banishers are slightly faster. I'm not totally sure. Going on the other hand, just... Building up the southwest. I think Lodri does have a bit more territory. If we look at what... I mean, especially what Lodri knows. At this point, Lodri knows pretty much everything on the map. Knows where things generally are. Probably infer from there what static, what isn't. So they have a great level of knowledge of the map. Clone, on the other hand, they have had it reduced, but they also had a similarly great knowledge of the map. Just lost a radar, though, so that does reduce what they know. They don't know so the commander is, and they don't know what's going on in the north... Yeah, they don't know that the northeast is being taken. Lodri, on the other hand, I think they know that... Do they know? They do know about the Southwest. They know very well about the Southwest. They aren't going up for it too quickly, though. They needn't really worry about it, honestly. It's like 30, 34, not a big deal. It's not something they have to worry about too much. What they do have to worry about, however, is... Well, the center. Clone is trying to cut the center and then go southwest from there. I mean, they, well, they have southwest, but they're trying to cut the center and break from there. Just take this chunk of land from Lodri, and then take this chunk of land from Lodri. At the same time, Lodri is more surrounding and trying to push in directly. And here we go. Clone going for that west center. Has made a nice consistent line. On the other hand, Lodri has a bit more of the map. They're in a much better position. And Raptor coming in here. Raptor versus Reaper. We're going to see that first happening. And like I said, the Reaper is more likely to get hit. The Ravagers are more likely to get killed quickly. I don't think... I don't think Ravagers will die in one shot, though. 1850 compared to... Yeah, they will not die. They'll die in, like, four shots or so. And fortunately, that was rather poor. I don't know why Lodri just let that Slasher go. That must have been a mistake. That was... That clearly wasn't proper micro. Right? That was likely a mistake. At any rate, they do know well about those Lotuses now. 
And this is where, I mean, the Banishers do not have the firepower, despite the fact that they have riot damage, they do not have the firepower to deal with this. And the Ravagers can just come in here, and once again, we see that Panthers would have been a better choice against the Ravagers. I mean, the Reapers, they're just not dying. They're being great meat shields, but the Banishers get targeted, those Ravagers have no chance whatsoever. I mean, the Banisher gets targeted, the Ravagers kill them. If the Reaper gets targeted, the Ravagers don't have a chance. That's what it is. And we see Lodri and Clone both going for air switch, both going entirely for bombers, not focusing on air control. Though at this point, I think Clone... I mean, Clone is a bit more flexed AA with the Banishers. Lodri does not have any flexed AA. Oh, they have some. They have the Scorchers. They have... Sorry, two Slashers. But the Banishers are a bit more powerful. That being said... It's kind of going to come down to, I think, who decides to go for anti-air first. And we do see Lori going for anti-air. They have their bombers. Actually, both players are going for anti-air, but Clone has fewer bombers. Clone has three Ravens. Lori has five. So at this point, once either player gets air control, I mean, once Lo if Lori gets air control, they have much more powerful, they have a much more powerful follow-up should they get air control than Clone does. That is going to be a big deal if it comes up. However, it looks like they're not even going to bother waiting for that. They're going to go in right now with their half dozen ravens. Take out what they can. They should be able to take out one reaper, actually. With the half dozen ravens. But they're going instead for the workers, which is the better option. I know I didn't point that out, because that is reclaim. That is economy for Clone being directly torn apart. And that's... The Ravagers. Sorry, the Reapers. They can... They can get killed later. They are fairly powerful, but mostly against static structures. And Clone is not assaulting with them. In fact, Lodri... They've assaulted back in... Oh, I completely missed Lodri's commander going... Or Clone's commander going down. Clone has lost their commander at this stage in the game. Not the biggest deal. Mostly a big problem for build power. They have no build power to the southwest side of the map. So that area isn't particularly safe. I mean, Lodri can just smack it a few times before killing it. They don't have to worry about it being rebuilt in the process too much. However, they do have to worry about the bombers coming in. The slashers are going to do their best. But at least... Well, one of the Wolverines is going to go down. Actually, all the Wolverines going down... Well, one of the Ravens does die in the process. The other Ravens getting hunted down by the Hawks, but able to escape. And Hawks coming in for Lowry, getting rid of... Sorry, for Clone, getting rid of Lowry's Ravens. Lowry's own Hawks, able to get rid of a couple of Clones, but Clone has far more Hawks than looks of it. Certainly more Hawks that are out front. However, because Clone's Hawks were focusing on Lowry's Ravens, and not Lowry's Hawks, Lowry's Hawks do have a bit of a numerical advantage. Bit of a turnaround there, but yes, Lowry able to take air control and able to preserve most of their ravens. That worked out very well for Lowry at this point. Clone, however, can still regain air control. It's not completely in Lowry's hands, but Lowry is building up Hawks entirely. They had the ravens. They don't need to sacrifice the construction of Hawks to get more ravens. They just need to keep the ones they have alive. But yeah, that worked out really well, because those ravens came in as bait. I don't know if Clone was actually expecting that to be bait. I don't know if Lowry was even expecting that to use that as bait. But it certainly worked out well, where at that point, Lowry could just attack Clone's distracted Hawks. However, Clone is pumping a lot of metal into their air factory. Lowry, on the other hand, they're pumping mostly into light vehicle factory. Air factory is being just its own build power. Actually, it looks like it's alternating. On the other hand, though, yeah, Clone is very specifically trying to get more air units. So Clone is really trying to regain air control. Lowry, on the other hand, is coasting a little bit, trying to get to ground assaults, and they are taking out the southwest pretty well. Like I said, the southwest, there's nothing to rebuild it. Not much can really be said of that. Oh, hey, Clone's in the chat. Hi, Clone. And this, three for assaults. Coming in here, this is where the Ravagers are going to be having a very hard time. Even number Ravager and Reaper is going to go naturally for the Reapers. I mean, the thing with Reapers is that you get half a dozen of them, and that's basically a Strider class unit right there. We're, oh, at least in terms of cost. And we're seeing chainsaws, too. That is an unusual thing to happen in 1v1, but given the way that this game has gone, Clone desperately wants air control. They want to get the air back. They want to be able to bomb. They want to be able to push forward without having to worry about getting attacked in the process. They don't want to worry about their Reapers getting destroyed. And want to be able to get rid of this artillery here. All these Wolverines which have torn apart the Southwest. And that is... That's uh, the southwest for Clone. That's lost for Clone, I should say. The Reapers, however, are being repaired as they should be, but Lori able to see exactly what's going on. They Lori basically knows everything that Clone has. Clone, on the other hand, is very much in the dark about Lori's position. They still don't really know about the Northeast. They are probably suspecting. They don't know what's going on in the main base. Lori, on the other hand, has almost complete knowledge of what's going on in Clone's base. They know what Clone has. They know how Clone has positioned their armies. They know where they're set up. 
they've been able to get rid of most of the units. The chainsaw here is really the only problem. That's going to be able to get rid of Hawks easily. It's going to very much limit the amount of anti-air that Lodri can do. Or anti-ground for that matter. These Reapers come in. Half a dozen, well, five Reapers coming in here just should be able to tear this apart without too much issue. Getting rid of yet another Stardust, but retreating again. Very typical of Clone. Doesn't want to move in until they know they're going to be able to win, but frankly, five Reapers. There's, there is not enough firepower in here to stop five Reapers. They are going to win. The Stinger is the only threat, although admittedly they're... They are still in range of the Chainsaw, but it doesn't look like Clone cares all that much. They really don't. I mean, literally neither, but Clone in particular, because they're just moving in with the Reapers. Moving one back with the other two, able to move in and tear everything apart. Very good decision making by Clone. However, with... With Clone the way they are, I mean, they're... They're actually... Wait, that, that can't be right. Darn it. Okay. There is a bug. Okay, there's a lot of bugs with the Deluxe player list, so... The fact that the army display is not correct sometimes when switching in and out is one of them. Ultimatum, however, coming up from Clone. Sorry, from Lodri. I don't like confusing them. Lodri, building an ultimatum. Not particularly useful against the ground, against the air, but against the ground, against the Reapers. That is going to turn this around nicely. Lodri, however... Why not? No, no, get their own crashes, not chainsaws. Same kind of miss, or similar kind of missile, but not the same at all. Ooh, getting rid of a couple of hawks just off the bat, but I think... I think Lodri's still ahead. I think that... Let's see, there's about nine hawks for Lodri and about... Three for Clone. Three for Clone. Yeah, Lodri is still way ahead. Clone trying to just get bombers. Trying to spend the air control they don't have. I don't see that being particularly useful. But at the same time, if they do it right, especially if they're near the chainsaw, thus discouraging the hawks from getting close, that might work. However, doesn't really matter because those bombers got way too far away. Hit a crasher, but not enough. I mean... Didn't even kill it, just hit it. But like I said, there is some impunity here with the with the chainsaw, but at the same time, there is some impunity with the crasher. And this point, we're looking back at ground control winning the game, and Clone, they still haven't retaken the southwest. They haven't taken the northeast. Lori just has more territory. Though Lori has also not taken the southwest, and Clone still technically has it. They just don't have any defenses around it. It's just that Lori can take it at their leisure, but they haven't actually lost it. Clone hasn't lost it. They just might. And Ultimatum showing what it can do. Mostly terraforming the ground, but also getting rid of these Reapers without any issue. And then making it darn impossible for Reapers to get through afterwards. I mean, isn't even vehicle pathable anymore? There's a lot of areas here that are purple that aren't vehicle pathable. So the Ultimatum just nicely made it a little choke point. As well as basically made it impossible or very difficult for Clone to get back. I mean, if the ultimate gets targeted and destroyed, it's a big it's a big deal. Which was almost destroyed in the process, too. I think ultimatums... I think they have a small nuke explosion when they die. I'm not entirely sure. Doesn't say. I guess special deaths still aren't in the space menu tooltips. Yeah, so the player list, when I'm switching armies, it looks like it, to be expected, does hide the economy value, but it's just, it doesn't up, I guess it's, it must update the metal value over time rather than constantly refreshing, which makes sense for efficiency's sake. But yeah, it doesn't adjust for when visibility changes. Anyway, that's something to bear in mind if a new playlist is built up. However, Lowry is taking air control completely, getting rid of all the bombers, although... Losing a few Hawks, and they have to be really careful about that Chainsaw. That Chainsaw is massively restricting their ability to use their Air Force. Looks like they're trying to find it, trying to get rid of it, sending a Scorcher in. Unfortunately gets taken out by a Lotus, but they send a few more Scorchers and they should be able to take out that Chainsaw. And if they do that, that will pretty much be game. Because at that point, Clone will be able to use all these Ravens and tear apart all these Hawks too. Lodri won't have much, but Lodri still moving back. The Ultimatum, however, is still in play. It's surprising that Clone is not going for the main for the sides. They tend to go for the sides first. It's very atypical of them to go for the main base and try to do a direct assault and win that way. That is not how they usually play. They might be getting desperate though. This is becoming a very difficult match for them. They have actually switched to Cloakie as well, just to get a bunch of glaives. Five so far. Probably gonna move them around to see if they can find any weak spots. There is this area here. Actually, this area is not weak at all. What am I saying? There's a ton of defenders over here. Glaives won't be able to move in there. 
There's nothing that Lodi has really left unconsolidated. Even the northeast, this, this one area here, the Reapers got through, but Reapers are meant to do that. They're assault units. That's their point. That being said, Glaive is still trying to take what they can get. Getting a few metal extractors here and there. Unfortunately, not able to do too much. If they get rid of the radar, what is... I mean, they only get rid of a fair amount of Lodi's vision. But they are not going for it. That is not what they want at all. In fact, they are just... They're retreating. They're getting out of there. Getting hit by a few claws, though. But they are getting out of there. Okay, so Lodi, basically the problem is they can't assault easily, and Glon's problem is they're getting hit way too hard to keep units alive easily. Although Glon, if they started to consolidate this area and took the northeast, if they were able to take the northeast with mobile anti-air, I think they'd have a pretty decent chance. It'd have to be mobile anti-air on the ground, though, but yeah, I think if they managed to pull that off, it would be... It would probably give them back in the game. I mean, their army value is considerably lower, but their economy is about even. They just need to get rid of all these all of these corpses here. That's going to be a bit of a problem. Glaives doing what they can, but there's actually a critical mass of Glaives. That's enough. That will be able to take care of the Scorchers without too much issue. Forcing them back, losing almost two dozen of them. Not two dozen, sorry. Losing a dozen. There was two dozen to begin with. Losing a dozen of them, and that was all inside of Glowen's territory. So Glowen gets a lot of reclaim to work with. And with that, is bolstered enough to push forward. Figures that they have enough firepower that they can just move in. And then figures that they probably don't, in fact, have that much firepower and moves back. Because, really, they don't. There's, they really need to be... They have to depend on that chainsaw. They don't want to lose anything to the bombers. That chainsaw is their main asset. Because if they are outside of chainsaw range, then at that point, any anti-air they have is hawks, and the hawks get torn apart by Lori's hawks. But I mean, Lori's hawks... Moving in on a suicide mission, not sure why they're doing this. A couple of them are going to go down, I think... No, they're all going to go down. They only got one kill between them, too. That was a waste. I mean, at this point, Lodi does have a much larger... Oh, no. They have far more Hawks, but their army isn't that much bigger. I mean, part of it, 2,000 of it is... Actually, come to think of it. 2,000 is the ultimatum. They have their commander over here that is upgraded once. That is another 1250. Yeah, most of the army difference is, in fact, the ultimatum and the commander. If those both died, Clone would actually be... So Clone is very nearly even in terms of basically regular non-strider, non-commander army. And Clone is also... I mean, they basically have a strider, like I said, of their own with the... With Reapers coming in, now breaking down this area here, but the ultimatum will spot them and will tear them apart. And that was... Oh, almost the right timing. The ultimatum almost got the perfect position to get rid of those Reapers. Got rid of almost all of them, although two of them still able to get through. I think this is going to be a suicide mission for Clone. Coming in with all their Reapers, they are... Are they building more? They are... Yeah, they're continuing to build more. But the Glaives coming in to get rid of the Ultimatum. Nice use of the Glaives there. Did lose a few Reapers, but the Glaives are the best choice. Getting rid of that Ultimatum. Unfortunately, Clone also lost three Reapers in the process. They should be able to take care of most of this area here, but Dante coming in right afterwards. Yeah, Clone, I think, will be able to turn this around. I think I think we're seeing a run back here. There's not a whole lot of anti-ground forces. There is the Slasher. That's about it. The Reapers can't take care of them easily. This one Reaper is the only weak link in that chain, and even then, it's still at 2,000 health. Wisely, though, Clone is retreating and setting up the Glaives rather nicely hiding them. At this point, Lori is, well, fairly well known where they are, especially where their commander is. Lori, on the other hand, has lost a lot of knowledge in that attack. Losing their commander as well, and that's... There's only 3,000 metal left, a lot of that being the Hawks, which can't do much, given that most of Clone's forces... Most of Clone's force is ground, not air. So at this point, Lodri just has... Not a whole lot, really. I'm gonna double check that this is correct. Yeah, that is correct, okay. The numbers are correct. And the Wolverines are about to die. Maybe. Well, a few of them are going to die. The Glaive is trying to come in here to deal with as many as they can. And a lot of the defenses were destroyed by the previous attack by Reapers. So it's really hard to do anything. But it's also hard for any attacks other than Reapers to come in from Clone. It's just that, literally, like I said, most of their army value is in the sky. That's, okay, 10,000 total. For Lodri, it's half of their army value is Hawks. So despite the numbers here, they're actually behind. Clone is having a much easier time dealing with all this. 
The only thing the opponent can't easily move out because if they do, they will end up getting hit by bombers, but there aren't a whole lot of those. In fact, it's almost entirely Hawks. Glory has air control, but nothing spent. All the air control is entirely just keeping air control. That is going to be... That is going to be an issue. In fact, I think we're going to be seeing Clone taking it from here. And Clone rushing in with the Reapers. Coming in with the Glaives as well on the same angle. Nothing over to the north, but I don't think they're going to worry about the north now. And the same reason the southwest wasn't worried about either. Lori didn't take that. Clone's not going to take the northwest. They're more worried about just going attacking directly. Although they probably should take out the northeast if possible. Lori is still building up very quickly. They have just gotten a... This, this is where the army value is now. They have just gotten a Dante. 3,500 metal. Still most of the difference, but it's still a big difference. And these Reapers are about to get attacked directly. Lori... Lori does know where they are and is taking them out, or trying to take them out. It's going to be a bit tricky, though. They are being repaired. But there isn't a whole lot in the sky that can deal with them. No bombers. There's a couple bombers. Okay, there's a couple... There's like two ravens. Five ravens. All of which belong to Clone, by the way. But the Dante... Trying to basically counter everything that Clone did, tearing apart Clone's defensive line, but at the same time getting close enough to that chainsaw that they could theoretically get hit by bombers without too much. Yeah, the Hawks from Lori can't really come in here, so a bomber could come in and tear this apart, but enough slash is being built. Lori at this point has far more than enough to deal with all these Reapers, especially the Dante, but the Dante is going to be the prime target. However, really, other than the Reapers, not much exists to deal with these. There are the Glaives, of course, and those will be able to deal with the Slashers without too much issue. But yeah, Bombers can't really be used because that would mean the Hawks kill them. And... The Reapers can't easily be used because the Dante can easily kill them. But the Reapers are pretty much all they have, so the Reapers moving forward to try to get rid of the Slashers. That should do a decent job of the Slashers running away, letting the Dante take most of the brunt, take all the damage tanking everything, but also getting split out. Unfortunately for the Reapers, though, they are still going to die in the process. This should kill the Dante. The Glaive's just going around on the other side, going behind the Dante, but they're going to run into the Dante directly. Should be able to kill it, though. That's going to be 213. One more hit. One more hit from a Reaper will kill it. And there it goes. The Dante goes down, and the Glaive's able to take out the Scorchers. Sorry, not able to take out the Scorchers. Uh, not scorchers the Slashers as well. Not able to do so. Failed to take out the Slashers. Enough of them were in the back to deal with the glaives. There's enough moving while the rest were stationary. Those glaives, unfortunately, while they did get rid of the Dante, did not get rid of the slashers, and once again, Lori is still way ahead of Clone in army value, and ahead in economy, and now taking out the southwest. And Clone never took out the northeast. Never moved to take that out. It's kind of hard, though, given the pressure. Like, at this point, Clone is actually well... Like, Lori, once again, has pretty much full knowledge. Clone, on the other hand, has... They know there's a bunch of slashers. That's what they know. That's about all they know. They still haven't even checked the Northeast. Well, no, they would have checked the Northeast. They saw it before. Really, the ghost buildings are just wonky. You can see the footprints of them, but you can't actually see the structure models. I don't know why that's happening. But Reapers, more Reapers coming in to get rid of the Slashers. Breaking them up. Should be able to kill about half of them. And they do indeed do so. While Lori... Are they switching? No, they're not switching up to anything other than just more caretakers trying to push more of their metal into what they have. Now, Clone, on the other hand, has a lot of reclaim to work with, and they're taking full advantage of it. They're pushing all of it into their factories, and they should be able to even things out now. Or very nearly even things out in terms of army value. Like I said, in terms of effective army value, it's mostly slashers, and there's only 1260 of those. So the Reapers should be able to tear them apart. The Reapers are basically countered by slashers, but at the same time, the slashers are not moving. That's a bit of a problem. Which actually, I think, if you put them on Fight Command, that was something that I think is still in the in the game. I'm not entirely sure. If you put them on Fight Command, it's supposed to make them attack and then move when something gets close and then stop and attack again. Not sure how well that works, though. However, we do see the Napalm Bomber from Lowry. I don't totally agree with this. I mean, the, it makes sense against the Glaives, but the Reapers are still the bulk of Clone's army. No further Striders are forthcoming, however. Do have more Bombers coming in. Just trying to raid in here and there. They aren't doing a whole lot of damage. Still, Clone not taking care of the Northeast. The Southwest is being rebuilt, though. So Clone getting back in there. And Lori taking advantage of the Reclaim on their own. Getting their Metal Value back up. And now, 
Air Control being completely ceded to Lowry. Clone throwing away all their Hawks in a vain attempt to try to kill something. However, they have given it all away. As well, that chainsaw was destroyed a little while ago. It was getting reclaimed. It's gone now. So these Hawks can just rush into Lowry's base and tear apart all the bombers if they want to. The Reapers being the only real threat, but those Reapers are going to get whittled down. Slowly but surely, bombers going to come in to whittle them down. Will that work? Well, yes, it will, actually, because there's nothing to stop them. The best that can be done is for the Reapers to try to attack as quickly as possible. But for that to work, that really has to go over to the less defended area, like the Northeast, which they are nowhere near, so that's not going to work out too well. Two Reapers have already gone down in that last set of raids. And another one looks poised to get killed. No, that was a Glaive instead. I went for the wrong target. And another Glaive. Why are they going for the Glaives directly? That's the Napalm Bomber's job. That's the Phoenix's job. So at this point, dedicated anti-air is pretty much necessary in order to get rid of Lowry's air control, but I, don't, I think Clone doesn't care. I think Clone's trying to just attack with Reapers as much as possible, but the Reapers... The Reapers are there. There's, there's five of them continuously, but they're constantly dying as well, and the reclaim is going to Lowry, though Lowry is losing the workers in the process. They're losing the masons that are doing this, but still. The reclaim is going to them. They're still taking it. Clone trying to take as much as they can as well, but it's... They don't have as much of a position... They certainly don't have the intel they need. They don't, I mean, Lowry just has... Lowry knows exactly what's going on. Clona has radar around their base, but doesn't know what's coming into the southwest. Or the northeast. They don't know what's attacking. I mean, they know it's slashes, but they didn't know they were there. Lowry has just had an information advantage this entire game. And that air control, that taking the air control has done a lot for them. Despite the fact that they are taking a lot of damage on the ground from the Reapers, Having the air control means that they can still bomb them out. That chainsaw was about the only thing keeping Clone alive. And having lost that, Clone basically has no easy way to get back in the game. I mean, the Reaper's coming in, doing what they can, but it's not enough, and Clone realizes this, throws in the towel, that is game! Half an hour long game, but interesting demonstration of how air control works and how anti-air can work. Especially as area denial. I think if Clone had built up a chainsaw over to the southwest and try to push that a bit more forward, that would have been a lot easier for them to keep hold of it. And then they could have gone to the northeast, attack that, and then from there, maybe build up a chainsaw. Like, you know, building chainsaws just to deny air control. So, Lowry has air control, but who cares? Oh yeah, Screamer, good idea too. Clone pointing out, it could have made Screamer. Rather than trying to make more vamps, which, or more hawks rather. Which would have been a bad idea. However, that was not what happened, and like I said, air control... It's like a good demonstration of air control, but also how area denial can really weaken the power of air control. Air con yeah, or silencer, get a nuke, as Scuzzy points out. But yeah, air control is important, but it's not the be-all end-all. Especially when you have that level of area denial, that means that they really can't do much. They can come in with their areas, but who cares? They're going to die. So you can just come in, you can do whatever you want in that area. Your ground units can do what they want, and Clone had the ground advantage that entire time. And Lori is saying they used the experimental, I got annoyed by it. Apparently, it's still very experimental. Good to know. I can kind of see why, though. You might want your slashes just to attack, even if they might die. Because you know they won't. That's why it's experimental. It's always one of the things about Zero K is... There is the decision-making on the player's part to override what the AI thinks is the best option. Now, the AI will kind of work, will work decently well, but oftentimes will be a little bit too... Well, it could be too risk-averse in the case of slashers. And that might not be what you want. So, I hope you enjoyed that. That is going to be it for me today. Thank you all for watching, and since it seems to have worked fine for Twitch and Hitbox, consider this to be the new official setup. So I will update all the promotional art and such to reflect that. But yes, now Twitch and Hitbox simultaneously. Thank you, random people on OBS Project Forums, for giving the solution to the send packet problem. Or send, sorry, send buffer size. Or send window. That's what it is. Send window. That's what I thought was TCP. So yeah, once again, that was the games. I'm Shadowfree333, wishing you all a good night.